I'm guessing lots of you out there will have heard of the term symbiosis before. Yeah, like him, kind of. If we were to scientifically define it, it's any type of close and long-term biological interaction between two organisms of different species. Symbiosis is presumed by many to be an advantageous strategy to help animals survive in the wild, but that's not always the case. Sure, there's examples of symbiosis that are beneficial to both animals. One of the most well-known is the clownfish and the anemone, where the clownfish gets protection and the anemone gets food. Both of those organisms benefit. That's called mutualism. On the flip side though, under the umbrella of symbiosis, you've also got parasitism. So this is where one organism will benefit while simultaneously causing harm to the other, like ticks who will attach themselves to animals feeding off their blood and in return they might end up giving you Lyme's disease. Ouch. But there's another type of symbiosis that's being spotted more and more between two of the ocean's most elite predators. Scientists believe that the oceanic white tip shark and the short fin pilot whale have a pretty intricate relationship with each other. And the evidence is now mounting that these two marine predators do indeed have a third kind of symbiotic association, which we call commensalism. When snorkelers or scuba divers are encountering pilot whales, 30 to 50% of the time, an oceanic white tip shark isn't far behind. The behavior has been widely documented in the Pacific Ocean around Hawaii but recently it's also been seen in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans as well, proving that this isn't just an isolated geographic interaction, but is likely something that's been happening between these two species probably for a very long time all around the world where their range overlaps. The problem is scientists are still trying to figure out exactly how and why these two animals are interacting with each other. So today we're going to have a look into this bizarre connection between these two top tier marine predators and we'll try and figure out exactly what's going on. Welcome back to another Shark Bites episode everyone. Now the internet would have you believe that this behavior was first reported in 1988 by Jeremy Stafford Dyche, a nature photographer and author in his book, Shark, A Photographer's Story. Although to my knowledge, it was actually first reported by Edward Schallenberger in 1981 as part of a report on Hawaiian cetacean numbers where he anecdotally observed it happening. Jeremy Stafford Dyche's description though is a bit more vivid than Schallenberger's. In his book, he recounts a snorkeling experience in Hawaii where the oceanic white tips who had been interested in their underwater cameras decided that they'd rather follow a pod of short fin pilot whales that were passing through and the shark shot after them at high speeds. Which would suggest that whatever the pilot whales were providing was of far greater benefit to the sharks than a noisy underwater camera. I also think Peter Benchley, the author of Jaws, mentioned this behavior in one of his books, but that was definitely after both Stafford Dyche and Schallenberger. As to exactly why the sharks were doing this though remained a mystery. Some of you out there might be thinking, well, they're sharks. Surely they're after these short fin pilot whales so they can have a nutritious blood based meal. And that line of thinking is fairly logical until you meet the pilot whale. Fight. These marine mammals have regularly been referred to as the cheetahs of the deep, reaching sizes of over 20 feet long. They'll also regularly dive down at immense speeds to a thousand meters deep to feed on squids and other cephalopods. Pilot whales are well and truly an apex predator of the ocean and reportedly even terrify killer whales enough for them to flee an area at high speeds. So while the oceanic white tip is a pretty revered predatory shark species, they're nowhere near the level of short fin pilot whales. And even 10 of these sharks all working together would not stand a chance against a pod of these guys. That's not to say they wouldn't have a go at a sick or injured one, by the way. If a pilot whale was on its last legs and had been abandoned by its pod, these opportunistic sharks would undoubtedly move in for the kill. So the people observing this behavior between the oceanic white tips and the pilot whales realized that it wasn't some kind of predator prey dynamic because the pilot whales weren't eating the oceanic white tips and the oceanic white tips weren't eating the pilot whales. So it had to be something else. Whatever that behavior was though, it was almost exclusively being documented in Hawaii. That's that's where Schallenberger first reported it in 1981, and since then, pretty much all of these interactions have been seen here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. There's so many videos across the internet of oceanic white tip sharks swimming alongside or just behind pods of pilot whales in Hawaii. This particular one here looks to be the first documentation of the behavior on film. So the video itself was uploaded to YouTube in 2012, but looking at the quality of it and the camera grain, I'd say the actual footage here taken by Lee Tipley was from the late 80s or very early 90s. So what you're probably watching here is the first time that this behavior was ever caught on camera. Since then though, we've got tons more footage of this happening in Hawaii. The Hawaiian Islands are of course an area of incredible marine biodiversity, including both sharks and cetaceans, and it just so happens to be an area where these two species range overlaps. Both oceanic white tips and short fin pilot whales occupy open ocean pelagic habitats, mostly in tropical or subtropical waters. But we can see their range overlaps with each other in lots of different places around the world, so why would this behavior 
behavior only be seen and filmed in Hawaii. People might have speculated then back in the 80s and early 90s that this behavior was geographically isolated. And because of that, it might mean that it was only fairly recently learned by the oceanic white tips. That was until scientists started reporting the same association in Caribbean waters, specifically off Cat Island in the Bahamas. More recently, the behavior has also been documented and filmed off the coast of Honduras near the island of Roatan. And even more recently than that, it's been seen off the coast of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean, which confirms it's not just isolated to the Pacific Ocean, but is also happening in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans, all across these two species overlapping range. And that tells us this behavior has probably been happening for a very, very long time. But the real question here is what exactly is going on? Well, according to the few anecdotal reports we have of this happening in the literature, it's believed the association they have with one another revolves around their food. Pilot whales are exceptional hunters of squid, and with those giant melon heads, they possess the ability of echolocation. This allows them to locate groups of squid in the deep ocean, where they dive down as a team for somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes, and they'll work together to herd the squid into big aggregations, and eventually take it in turns to suck as many as they can into their mouths before rapidly returning to the surface. Interestingly, after comparing their muscle-stable isotope values, the scientists could see that the oceanic white tip sharks and the short fin pilot whales had very, very similar levels to each other, which would suggest they were feeding on similar prey species, squid. As well as these similar isotope levels, after attaching tags to both of the species, some scientists also discovered that the sharks and the whales had fairly similar dive profiles. Generally, oceanic white tips will dive down mostly to around 200 meters, but occasionally they'll perform dives down to around 1,000 meters, which is almost exactly the same depth that the short fin pilot whales dive down to to hunt those deep sea squid. Just as a little cool side note here, the oceanic white tip sharks dive deeper for squid in the Atlantic Ocean compared to the Pacific Ocean because oxygen levels are higher in the deep Atlantic than they are in the deep Pacific, allowing them to just go that much further down. It's all because of how the polar oceans work, but I've got sidetracked. Anyway, scientists thought then that the oceanic white tip sharks must be taking advantage of the pilot whale's ability to locate and herd all of those squid a thousand meters down. So they had a commensalistic relationship or displayed commensalism. If we think back to our symbiotic relationships that we spoke about at the start of the video, like parasitism and mutualism, commensalism also comes under that same umbrella. But this time, instead of them both benefiting or one of them benefiting and the other one being harmed, we've got one organism that benefits, the oceanic white tip shark, and the other organism is neither harmed nor benefits, the pilot whale. The sharks are using the pilot whales to their own advantage to locate, herd, and eventually eat those highly nutritious deep sea squid. But there's a bit of a question mark here because if this interaction is all about the sharks and the whales trying to find deep sea squid, then why is it that we're seeing the sharks interact with the whales at the surface? Well, it's partly just because that's where we humans are able to see and film from, but there's also another interaction going on. According to reports, the oceanic white tips are feeding off some of the squid scraps left by the pilot whales at the surface. After the whales dive down to feast on their squid buffet, they've got to return to the surface at some point. And when they do, there's bits of squid that they can't digest, namely the beaks. Squid or cephalopod beaks are made up of chitin, which is pretty hard and is indigestible for marine mammals. So so because they can't digest it, they regurgitate it where it's fair game for any other marine creature, notably the oceanic white tip shark. Shark digestive tracts are incredible at breaking down hard to digest materials, and because their digestion is so slow, it allows them to really take their time getting maximum nutrients out of whatever it is they've eaten. So oceanic white tips will actively decide to consume these chitinous squid beaks. Waste not, want not, I guess. But it doesn't stop there. Oceanic white tips take waste not, want not a bit too seriously. They've even been reported to consume the whale's feces. Yeah, that's right. Oceanic white tips are eating pilot whale poo. Kind of similar to the beak regurgitation feeding, the sharks here are able to yield more nutrition from the compounds that the pilot whales struggled to break down during their own digestion process. Bits of beak and shell and undigested goo will all be consumed by the following oceanic white tips to give them a foraging advantage. It's probably one of the multiple behavioral traits that these sharks have to be able to survive in this niche. In the pelagic open ocean, prey is scarcely distributed across an unfathomable area, so it pays here to be opportunistic and adaptable when it comes to 
hunting your food because that food is just so limited. And that's exactly what this shark species is doing here. Oceanic white tips are working smarter, not harder. The crazy thing here though is that this shark pilot whale commensalistic behavior is now being seen in other shark species as well. Galapagos sharks and silky sharks have both been documented performing the same behaviors as the oceanic white tips feces eating following behavior. So it does beg the question, how many more shark species are capitalizing off the hunting prowess of different whales from around the world? Whales and sharks, man, these two completely different marine animals are so closely linked across our oceans. They'll regularly just follow one another as they move thousands and thousands of miles. For example, white sharks, their movements in certain parts of the world are almost exclusively dictated by the migrations of different whale species. On one occasion as well, it was this linked movement between white sharks and whales that actually led to a very unlikely shark attack. And I tell you all about it in this video here. In it, you'll learn about how a white shark who was following southern right whales found itself off an icy cold island in the sub-Antarctic Ocean, where it eventually bumped into an unsuspecting snorkeler. So if you wanna learn all about that crazy incident, make sure you give this video a watch.